Can a die-hard historical romance fan like sports romance? Touchdowns or tea? Soirees or sports? Balls? Or balls. No, 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 I heard that. Hi, I'm B, and welcome to my channel. Mama needs to read some romance because nobody in this book is gonna spend practice time picking flowers in a field and spinning around. I've been into historical romance for a little while now, but I've been trying to expand my horizons. I'm learning things that I'm really not into, such as monster romance, no. Alien romance, uh-uh. Romance where it's one woman who gets to have two husbands, don't even get me started. All I can think about is having two men around the house who are gonna fix things instead of calling someone or arguing over what we're going to pick on Netflix. So when Christy of Christy Reads A Lot did a video recently all about sports romance, I was a little dubious. Now Christy's given me so many any good books on my TBR so I thought you know I'm gonna give this a try even though I don't like sports maybe I'd like a sports romance enter Christie's pick the game plan by Kristen Callahan whoa I was not quite prepared for this book coming from a historical romance background I'm more used to phrases such as and then he uttered an expletive that made her blush as opposed to I effing love you I'm like, oh, is that, is this football? I, I don't know. I couldn't listen to this book for more than five minutes without my AirPods in because I didn't want anybody running through the room because there was so much cussing. I was not used to that. A lot of this was just over the top for me in the beginning. Their first kiss in a club went way beyond just a kiss in public. And then at one point they're strolling through a garden and he's got a sleeping baby strapped to his chest and he starts feeling her in certain places. And I thought, what if my, you have a sleeping baby strapped to your chest. This is not romantic, I'm sorry. And there were far too many updates on what's going on in the pants. I don't need to know every five minutes what you're feeling in your pants, TMI. And in historical romance, I'm used to cravats and finely tailored suits but this guy had a man bun, a beard, tattoos everywhere. He was like a solid wall because he's a football player. And he also had piercings, like in really interesting places, which I was not prepared for. In fact, during their first love scene, they never call them love scenes, by the way. There's another four letter word that they like to use. Because of all the piercings, I was cringing, thinking, oh, something's gonna get snagged. Oh, something's gonna get stuck. I know it. Oh no! Like I was just really worried about the logistics. So I thought that's it. This book is gonna be a DNF for me right after this chapter. I'm just gonna listen to a little bit more and then I'm done. And then it's DNF'd. That's it. And then every time I went back into Audible, I'd see the icon there for that book next to the book I was gonna pick. And every time I was like, well, I'm just gonna listen to a little more and then I'm done. No more. So I wound up finishing the book. <laughs> Surprise, surprise, because even though it was so much different than what I'm used to, it was like a breath of fresh air. I was listening to that book at the same time that I was listening to some of the bleaker moments from A Crown of Thorn and Roses, and it was so nice to listen to something that I knew there weren't gonna be any monsters, no one was going to die. I felt like there was very little thinking involved when it came to this book because it was primarily for the first two thirds of the book just about their relationship. So it was pretty easy. I could jump back in without even having to think about like what's going on, where are we on the map, what are the historical ties to this, blah, blah, blah. This book focuses on two people, Fiona and Dex. Dex is a football player. Fiona is like an interior designer. He's known her for years and he's carried a torch for her secretly. And he loves this woman with everything he has. He's like a giant teddy bear. And he's like, you just feel like you want him to wrap you up in his arms. And the, the whole thing starts, she doesn't even really know that she has any feelings for him, but all she does is she touches his beard. Like they're alone together in a club and he lets her touch his beard and whoa, sparks fly like crazy after that. He will do anything for this woman. He loves her to pieces. He even puts his finished coffee mug in the dishwasher. So basically this is the perfect guy. Their love scenes, again, they don't call them love scenes, but I'm going to because this video doesn't have a rating. Their love scenes are super spicy. Here's the other thing that surprised me about this book. He is a virgin. I've never read a romance novel where the guy was a virgin before and he's a virgin by choice. He was w saving himself for Fiona, which could sound really crazy and creepy, but because this is told in first person, alternating points of view, you get, you know that he's not, there's no 
like in ulterior motives. He's just a really good guy who was saving himself for Fiona or someone that he would fancy as much as Fiona, but he just never found anybody. So he's been, so the very first love scene is insanely intense because it's his first time. So it was a lot. The other th cool thing about this being in first person is you know from the get-go, even though they're just making love, he thinks of it as way more than that. She doesn't really, she's not really sure, but he wants it to be forever. And you just get swept away in his feelings. Found myself really caring about these characters and finding out what was going to happen to them, what was going to happen to their relationship. The big obstacle in the beginning is that they live in separate towns. He's in New Orleans and she's in New York City. So how are they going to make this work? And can they make this work? There are some other things that happen because he's in the NFL, he's in the public eye, and there were some plot points that I was not super thrilled about that dealt with bad publicity. And I mean, you have to have conflict in a book. But for me, I was like, it was just kind of cringed. It went on a little bit too long, but I guess it made sense considering again, he's famous and things can happen. This is the kind of stuff that happens to them, happens in real life. So I had to deduct half a point for my rating because of that, but also I deducted the half point for my rating because at one point he has something called a mantrum, as he calls it, and I am not about huge fits of anger. That's not my thing. So you get the sense though that this was a one-time deal. It was totally out of character for him. And when they jump forward in time, like again, they're very, very happy and you get a sense that he's not just gonna be some guy having temper tantrums all the time. But I didn't care for that part. So I did have to deduct half a point for that as well. Also, I liked hearing a little bit about the football. It was just the right amount of football for me so that you knew he was a football player. You felt like he was working because sometimes like in books or movies, you're like, do you have a job? You said you have a job, but you're not doing anything. <laughs> but he was, I wasn't lost in like football terminology or anything like that. It wasn't like overkill for me. And coming from somebody that never ever watches football and doesn't know anything about football. I mean, it was just the right amount of football. I listened to this on Audible and it did cost one credit. I thought Teddy Hamilton was a great narrator. He's sort of like Clint Eastwood. He's kind of gruff, but he's cool. His voice is always like a little bit intense and gritty. I thought it was good. And I think he actually does the narration for most of the books of the Game On series which is, so he's all the guys. Grace Grant, she was okay. She wasn't my favorite, but I really did like Teddy Hamilton's voice. The one thing I didn't like about the narration is when they were doing each other's voices, like Teddy Hamilton's version of Fiona was like really high pitched and Grace Grant's version of Dex was like really deep. And I mean, it was just not, it was just awkward. <laughs> So the ending was great. It makes me want to read all the books in the Game On series. This was the third of four books. I gave this book four stars and I am planning on reading the rest. So Game On. Well, that's it for me. I hope this was helpful to you. Do you enjoy sports romance? Do you enjoy historical romance? Have you ever read Kristen Callahan? Let me know in the comments. I hope you're doing well and I hope you're enjoying whatever it is you're reading on whatever it is that you're reading on. Thanks so much. Take care. Bye.